The black briefcase or the presidential emergency satchel or nuclear footballer as it's more commonly known is a small briefcase weighing about 40 pounds which is carried by the American president whenever he's out of the White House in case there were to be some form of military attack. Now there are four things inside this nuclear briefcase. The black book, that's the main entity. It contains retaliatory options in the event of a nuclear attack. There's also a list of classified site locations across the United States and around the world. There's a booklet which lists out the emergency broadcast procedure because the president is expected to address the nation. And then finally, the most important thing, a three inch by five inch card which has the nuclear authentication codes. The president is always accompanied by a military aide who carries the nuclear briefcase. It is said to be made out of zero metal Halliburton. A small antenna protrudes from the black briefcase, which is said to be communications equipment. Now, in recent days, it's not just the US president, but Russian President Vladimir Putin, who has been spotted several times accompanied by a military officer who is supposedly carrying the nuclear briefcase. Putin has been spotted several times around what appears to be Russia's secret nuclear briefcase. On Crux Decode, what is the Russian nuclear briefcase called? Who has the command and control authority other than the president to activate the nuclear codes? And most importantly, how does the nuclear command structure activate itself once the president has authenticated the nuclear code? Last month, Vladimir Putin arrived in Belarus for a spaceport uh, along with Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko. Putin arrived on the scene accompanied by his top military officers who were seen carrying a black briefcase. Now, this was just days after it was photographed at a state funeral. So the secret case is thought to contain the launch codes for Kremlin's strategic missiles. And the fact that this briefcase was found at a funeral and within days in a meeting with the Belarusian president, that was seen by many as a chilling threat, a message that's being sent out by the Kremlin to the rest of the world. Now, this briefcase, which has a personalized key code, is normally under 24-7 supervision. It completely controls Moscow's nuclear arsenal. It is reportedly supervised by an armed security officer who accompanies the president wherever he travels. The briefcase is called Cheget, in Russian. It was developed back in the 1980s. It was shown to the world for the first time in 2018 and its contents were viewed up close on television. Cheget uh, is a nuclear briefcase. It's named after Mount Cheget in the Kabardino Balkaria part of Russia. It is part of an automatic system for the command and control of Russia's strategic nuclear forces. The entire unit, the entire system is called Kazbek. It's named after Mount Kazbek on the Georgia-Russia border. The Cheget was developed, like I said, in the early 1980s uh, during Yuri Andropov's administration. The suitcase was first put into service just as Mikhail Gorbachev took office as the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. This was in March of 1985. Now, the Cheget is connected to the special communication system which is codenamed Kavkaz. Now, Kavkaz essentially supports communication between senior government officials while they're making the decision on whether or not to use a nuclear weapon. Kavkaz itself is then plugged onto the overall Kazbek, which brings together all the individuals and all the agencies who are involved in the command and control of the strategic nuclear forces. The president of Russia has a Cheget on hand at all times. And it's not just the president. In fact, there is speculation that similar nuclear briefcases are also given to the Minister of Defense and to the Chief of General Staff. The General Staff receives the signal and initiates the nuclear strike through the passing of authorization codes to the missile silo launch complexes or to the ballistic missile submarines. They could also alternatively remotely launch individual either land-based or sea-based intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now, on the 25th of January 1995, there was an incident involving the United States, Norway and Russia. It was called the Norwegian rocket incident. At that time, the Cheget, the nuclear briefcase, got activated 
in response to what was a misidentified Brand 12 four-stage rocket. That rocket was launched by Norwegian and American scientists. It was the only known time that the nuclear briefcase has been activated in preparation for an attack. Now, according to local media in Russia, there's not just one, but there are three nuclear briefcases in total. Under Russia's 1993 constitution, the president is the commander-in-chief, and if he or she is incapacitated in any way, then all of their important duties fall to the prime minister. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because as far as the nuclear briefcase or the Shaget is concerned, the prime minister does not have one at his disposal. The other two Chiget briefcases are actually held by the Minister of Defense, in this case Sergei Shoigu, and the Chief of General Staff. In today's Russia, neither of these two military men, the Defense Minister or the Chief of General Staff, has the constitutional authority to make a decision about how or whether to launch a nuclear attack in the event that the President is indisposed. Now, certainly, they would be among the top advisors to the President at a time of crisis, but they are not decision makers in themselves. They are not the constitutionally bound authorities uh, to take that decision. If a nuclear launch were to be ordered, it would go from the Chiget to a receiving terminal. The receiving terminal is called Baksan. It's located at the command post of the general staff. The rocket forces, Navy and Air Force all get the signal. The overall communications network is called the Kazbek. Like I said, it's named after Mount Kazbek on the Russia-Georgia border. The Chiget does not by itself contain a nuclear button. What it does have is a transmission system for permission to launch nuclear weapons. The launch permission would then be received by the military. It will then be distributed uh, to the proper branch of service and the weapons crews. In fact, a few years ago, there was a book that, that had come out by an American author, David Hoffman, called The Dead Hand. The book basically described the Soviet-era system for a guaranteed retaliation to a nuclear attack. The system put on combat duty in the 1980s, just about the same time as the Chaget briefcase got introduced. This system is called the Perimeter. In a doomsday scenario, if the leadership, if the president and other constitutional authorities are incapacitated, are no more in a position to take a decision, and a nuclear attack is underway, the decision about whether to launch nuclear missiles would actually fall to a group of surviving military officers. Now, these officers would be in a deep, secretive underground bunker far away from Moscow. That system, the system of the perimeter, continues to exist even to this day. It's a bit of a leftover, if you will, from the days of the Cold War. But the increasing presence of the Chaget in recent days in, uh, is Vladimir Putin's way of signaling to the West that he is serious about the nuclear threat. In fact, Russia's nuclear doctrine talks about the first use or the possibility of first use if its very existence as a state and a people is threatened. So if it's an existential threat, then Russia is well within its right to use nuclear weapons first. Now, here is uh, where it gets interesting as far as this particular invasion of Ukraine is concerned. On the 27th of February, that's three days after Vladimir Putin announced his special military operation in Ukraine, he ordered the nuclear forces to be put on high alert. In fact, following that, the defense ministry said that both the strategic missile forces, the northern and Pacific fleets, and the long-range aviation command had been placed under enhanced combat duty. Now, they've got reinforced personnel as well as uh, military equipment. Now, this term, enhanced or special combat duty, is not something that is part of uh, Russia's nuclear doctrine. So many military experts were questioning what does enhanced combat duty mean? Finally, they've come to the conclusion that the order might have activated Russia's nuclear command and control system, essentially opening communication channels for any eventual launch order. But the presence of the Chiget over the last few days, whenever Vladimir Putin is seen outside of Russia, that in itself is clearly sending a message to NATO and the West.